At this point, it's impossible to ignore DeepSeek. The app has shot up to number one on the App Store charts. It's caused panic in the stock market, and now some people prefer it over ChatGPT. But let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet, because in this video, we're going to explain exactly what DeepSeek R1 is, why it's causing people to panic, and how to use this insanely powerful AI model on your iPhone and your Mac. And trust me, it is far superior to Apple intelligence. It's not even really the same thing, but I had to throw that in there. Okay, so first off, what is DeepSeek and why is everybody going crazy over it? So first off, DeepSeek is an AI company out of China that recently launched a new open source AI reasoning model called R1. And a reasoning model is an AI that's designed for multi-step thinking and problem solving rather than just predicting text like a glorified autocomplete. Now, what makes R1 so special is not only that it matches the performance of OpenAI's cutting edge O1 model, which is their reasoning model, which by the way, that's locked behind a $20 a month subscription, but DeepSeek does this for free. There's no subscription. This is completely free and open source. Once again, we need to reiterate that open source is a massive deal because yes, you can use the web interface. You can go on there and type in, you know, and do everything with a 50 uh, message a day limit. But the big selling point here for, for DeepSeek, the big pro here is that it's open source, which means they can run this locally on your computer without sending your data off to the cloud. And especially what a lot of people are worried about sending their data off to China. But another key point here, and the reason that the whole stock market it sold off and the reason people were panicking is because it came out that allegedly this model only cost under six million dollars to build and train however what most people fail to mention is that that number is just for one training so the total cost is likely much higher but still the total tally is going to be significantly less than what you know, OpenAI, for example, has spent training their models. But the real game changer is when it comes to cost for consumers and for enterprise, because the API usage is significantly cheaper. So R1 costs $2.19 per million output tokens, while OpenAI's O1 model costs $60 per million output tokens. That is a fraction of the price. So again, that is a massive win for the consumer and especially for enterprise who are gonna be building apps you know, with this. Okay, so before we hop on the computer and the iPhone and show you DeepSeek in action, we need to talk about what makes DeepSeek so special. What makes it unique and different from say a ChatGPT 01? Because we know that DeepSeek matches the performance of 01 across math, coding, and reasoning tasks. But what makes it unique aside from the cost? Well, the main thing is that it uses a combination of supervised fine tuning and reinforcement learning or RL to handle complex reasoning tasks. Meanwhile, most other AI models rely a lot more heavily on just the supervised fine tuning aspect with a lot less emphasis on RL or reinforcement learning for self improvement. Okay, so let's talk about how to use DeepSeek and kind of compare it to ChatGPT, Siri with Apple intelligence and so on. So we're going to start on the iPhone and then we're going to go over to our computer to show some more advanced use cases for DeepSeek. So first off, you can see if you search for DeepSeek or if you go to the charts, it's going to be number one in every chart. You can see it right here. So it's currently on version 1.0.6 that will vary based on when you download the application. But if you go in, you will see this right here. You will need to make an account. I would recommend using your Apple account or just signing in with a Google account. That's going to be the quickest way to get into here. Now, keep in mind, iOS and macOS apps run in a sandboxed environment, meaning that they cannot access other apps, data or system files without explicit permission. So if you're worried about this app stealing your contacts or stealing your messages or anything like that, you know, that stuff is not going to happen in these applications because once again, it runs in a sandboxed environment. You have to explicitly give permission before any type of application can collect that data. And as you can see, it was not asked for this application. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you should trust China with all your data. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that downloading the app and using the app is not going to have any type of security impact or security risk to your data that's on your phone that's outside of the DeepSeek application. So anyways, once you're in here on your new chat, you wanna make sure to enable DeepThink R1. So that's off by default. You wanna make sure that you are using 
the R1 model. So select that. And you can also select web search, which is something that even the O1 model cannot do. Okay, so we're going to enter a prompt that takes some type of thinking and reasoning. So it's about two trains leaving at certain times going a certain speed at what time do they meet. And also I said explain how you arrived at the answer with each step. So if we go ahead and tap on send, we can see how, okay, so we're gonna turn off search. So it didn't like that. So let's go ahead and do this without search. And once again, the servers are going crazy. So you might have some issues. So anyways, once you type that in, you will see right here that it actually shows what it's thinking. It shows the reasoning before the answer. So this is called chain of thought or COT reasoning. And this is really cool. This is also something that makes deep seek unique is that it shows you exactly what it's thinking so it says okay let's see so there's a problem about two trains so on and so on and then it says hmm so one train starts an hour earlier than the other that means by the time the second train starts and so on so it uses really human-like reasoning before it answers the question it actually gives you a peek behind the curtain as to what you know the r1 model is thinking before it gives you an output and once again it uses rl or reinforcement learning which means that if it makes a mistake it will catch the mistake and learn from itself you know before it gives you the answer and even if you tell it it's wrong it will also you know show itself thinking about what went wrong and how it can fix it, which is really awesome. So here we go. It gives us the answer at 1226 PM. Now, if we do the same thing with chat GPT on the iPhone, if we go ahead into our type to Siri right here and we type in the same thing, it will show that okay so it's starting a workout so you can see that this is clearly a lot better than apple intelligence which it's not even the same thing like i said earlier but i still wanted to show that that was pretty funny so let's go into chat gpt the application because that's where we'll be able to actually use this we're going to go up here and go to the o1 model and we'll type in the same thing we'll enter the same prompt and you can see the comparison between the two so you can see that chat gpt thought for eight seconds and then it gives you the answer right here so chat gpt was a bit quicker but it doesn't really show you the reasoning it doesn't show you you know kind of how it came up with that answer so it just says determining the meeting point and that's it it doesn't really show you as much as deep seek did okay so now we're moving over to our computer our mac right here so you can see the interface on desktop so you can get to this by going to chat.deepseek.com this is the website right here so it works pretty much the same as the mobile application it's just a little bit different ui and it's much easier to work with on desktop so you want to make sure to select deep think r1 and once again we'll type in a new prompt here so we're going to copy this into deep seek r1 and we're also going to do the same here with o1 with OpenAI, so we're going to go ahead and enter right there and then we'll do the same on DeepSeek. and once again you'll see the reasoning here the thinking behind DeepSeek's answer which i just love this it's really cool to read you could also copy this as well and you can kind of paste this into ChatGPT if you would like. So surprisingly, DeepSeek finished this before ChatGPT did with the O1 model. So that was pretty interesting. And another thing I wanted to mention is if I type in something like wrong and saying that it's wrong and it says it'll actually kind of show you how it tries to resolve a potential hallucination, which a hallucination is just when a AI you know model gets something wrong. So it tells you, you know, it's, it basically runs through how R1 is thinking about if it hallucinated or not and how to potentially get to the right answer where if I did that with the O1 model you can see it will think about it but it won't show you how it's thinking and as far as actually writing the code I asked to write me working code for a simple 3d ball floating in space with a smaller ball floating inside of it so chat GPT gave me the code for this 3d ball and I put it into an HTML online viewer and you can see that is the result from the O1 model so now let's see what deep seek gives me and how it compares now what's cool is that you can run the HTML code straight from DeepSeek. So you cannot do that here in ChatGPT. So you can see there's nothing to run. But when I go to DeepSeek, we have a run HTML button right here. And we can click on that. And you can see that I do not need that online viewer and another browser over here. I can just run it straight from the DeepSeek interface. However, you can see that the result is a bit better with ChatGPT. It makes it a bit more modern and it shows a ball inside of a ball, whereas DeepSeek really just shows me one red ball 
kind of floating right there. So I like the answer better from O1, but I do like the interface here from DeepSeek better where I can run it straight from the platform, straight from the web interface. And the last test that I wanna show as an example in this video is one that I'm gonna be personally using on a daily basis, and it's a writing task. Just simply using these models to help me write and come up with ideas. So I said, write a funny script on the upcoming iPhone 17. And DeepSeek actually gave me a far better script. So first off, it gave me the reasoning right here. And if you go down, you can see it shows the title and the setting and even says Tim Apple as like a joke about, you know, Tim Cook and just reading through this. Everything is, is more personable, it's more human-like, it's more humorous than the result that we got with ChatGPT's O1. So honestly, if it was not for the advanced voice mode on ChatGPT on the mobile app, and if it were not for the custom GPTs, then I would be switching over to DeepSeek pretty much full-time and running it locally on my machine. But I'm gonna be holding on to ChatGPT just because of those two features I mentioned since they are not available with DeepSeek. Now, I also wanted to show you how you can run DeepSeek locally on your Mac or your PC. You could do this for Llama, for any of these other ones as well. So I'm personally using LM Studio on my Mac. You can go there at lmstudio.ai and download the application right there. And then this is what it will look like. And once you're in here, all you want to do is just type in DeepSeek into the search field right here and go to go. And it's going to show you the results over here from Hugging Face. Now, the first result is going to be the main DeepSeek R1 model. But if you you have a consumer grade computer you most likely will not be able to run this you know I have a pretty hefty Mac studio machine and it says this is likely too large for this machine so instead we want to look for a distilled version of this so you can use one of these two right here I use this one from unsloth and this is the r1 distill llama and I downloaded this one right here, the 8 billion. And what I mean by 8 billion is that it has 8 billion parameters. That's just the model size and the computational complexity of that model. You wanna just kind of find a, a middle ground here. I just went with this one because it's probably best for my use case. So after you click download right here, you will need to click download. It will show your progress down here and you can see mine is complete. Now, after that, you wanna to go to AI chat over here on the side and you want to go up here and load in your model. So I have the DeepSeek R1 model, the distilled model right there, and it will load it. And now you can chat just like you can on the web interface. So I'll type in this prompt right here. We'll go ahead and hit return and it will start processing and working on that prompt. Now you'll notice that it starts writing it in plain text. You can change that to markdown up here if you prefer to see it in a markdown format or of course monospace as well. But you can see it's gonna work right here and do everything pretty much the same as it would in the web browser, but this data stays on device. It does not connect to a cloud server in China or anywhere else. And that's what makes this, you know, probably the go-to way to run this model specifically, this DeepSeek R1 model. Okay, so we have to address the elephant in the room here, and that is the privacy concerns. The big concern that a lot of people have is, well, isn't all of my data going to Chinese servers? And the answer is yes. If you look at DeepSeek's privacy policy, it does say that user data is stored in secure servers located in the People's Republic of China. And of course, they do also collect personal information such as user input, keystroke patterns, IP addresses, and more. But honestly, if you look at OpenAIs, they collect pretty much the same amount of data that DeepSeek does. So really it comes down to, you know, I kind of see this like TikTok when that first launched. Some people did not care other people were worried about their data going to China. Now, if you're in the second group of people, then you'll probably want to run R1 locally on your Mac or PC so that your information stays on a device. And again, that's a big advantage here for DeepSeek because it's open source. You can run it locally without ever connecting to servers or connecting to the internet. You cannot do that with ChatGPT. So you can open up something like an LM Studio, you know, and, and search the Hugging Face Hub and search for DeepSeek and download DeepSeek on your machine. And again, you can even download this on like a MacBook or you know, on a Mac Studio, for example. And you could also access DeepSeek R1 on US-based providers like Together AI, for example. So Together AI allows you to run this on their servers. That way your data is not going directly to the Chinese servers of DeepSeek. So yeah, overall, I'm very impressed with DeepSeek. This is one of the most powerful models on the market and it's completely free to use. And even though I'm still team ChatGPT, this is pretty awesome for so many reasons. And I think this is 
is a massive shift, a massive deal for the AI industry as a whole. I do think this is going to make the biggest impact on enterprise, in my opinion, because I do think it has potential to greatly reduce the cost of creating and maintaining applications. It's also just big for average users like you and I who just want a free alternative to ChatGPT's O1 model and whatever future reasoning models come out. Anyways, I'm really curious to know what you guys think of DeepSeek R1. So let me know your thoughts down there in the comments below. And if you wanna see more videos similar to this, especially videos on iOS and on the Mac, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.